Hi everyone, my name is John Breslin um, and uh, I'm going to go with some flashcards to help me remember what to say today um, kind of um, Descartes style except on paper um, My online na username is Cloud and um, I'm going to talk to you today, today about data portability First of all, just to tell you a little bit about me um, I'm from a research institute called Derry which is um, the world's largest semantic web research institute uh, which is located here in Galway, in the west of Ireland. And uh, what is the semantic web? Well, basically it's um, a web where more meaning is added. And so we have relationships like, uh, uh, like this. So um, some kind of uh, things and there's connections between them, a relationship. So as shown. And my main project is something called SHOC, uh, which stands for Semantically Interlinked Online Communities and it's a way of um, defining the content from social websites. And I'm also a founder of a big uh, website called boards.ie, which is a message board site here in Ireland. So I have some experience in um, how communities are formed and what the requirements are for uh, porting information uh, between communities. So, first question is, what does data portability mean to me? At the moment we have data silos which um, are acting like islands. These are various websites that are um, containing data about you and your content but it's very difficult for you to be able to bring your, your content um, from one island to another. So some um, have uh, maybe uh, potential to uh, create bridges between islands and others are just totally disconnected. Whereas what you want to be able to do is to be able to port your data um, from one place to another. So as you move or as you um, go from one site to another and back again, you might want to bring information about you like your blog posts, your friends, your photos, your um, media files, bookmarks, tweets, whatever. So as one example, maybe you're on um, some blogging platform and then you decide that you want to move to some other type of social network site. Um, where there might be more functionality and you want to be able to move your articles also information about what kind of categories they belong to if they're about TV or sport or whatever and bring all the information with you um, from one site to another these um, ob uh, articles are effectively um, kinds of social objects that are connecting you to other people who, uh, who share your interests so data portability how will it change the way you use the web now if you've seen any of the data portability videos you may be familiar with this um, it's a common thing that's repeated uh, where you go to one site and you have to fill in all this information again and again and again so uh, one uh, thing it will help you to solve is the, the problem with having to register for 50 sites or more filling in all these same boxes again and again also when you move from one site to another you have to redefine your friends again and again so you go from uh, one social networking platform to another and you have to try and look for Jim, Mary, Fred and all your other friends uh, on these new sites. And this is uh, being tackled in some way by efforts like the um, Social Graph API from Google. And another problem when you go from one site to another is that you have to manually copy and paste all of your content between services. So you decide that you want to reuse um, part of a blog post that you wrote on one site um, in, in perhaps a forum on another site. You have to copy, paste or if you're trying to bring a photograph from one site to another, lots of downloading and uploading is required. So, next question is, what does data portability bring to the people who actually store data and who are um, uh, community sites or vendors? Well, first of all, you're opening up the avenues uh, by providing some data portability mechanisms to build new services on top of uh, your site. So things like APIs, query languages, semantic markup, and so on can allow people to build new interesting applications on top of the data that you are already providing. So that of course makes uh, your users happier and also they have access to the data if, if they need it. We're not saying necessarily that they may want to suddenly jump ship straight away but certainly users will feel happier if they uh, know that they have access to the data whenever they need it if they want to bring some part or all, all of their data with them. And of course you get more interesting applications built on top of your site by uh, providing some um, APIs or query language uh, mechanisms 
So we have loads of examples of these already from sites like Facebook, Twitter, and uh, some of the Google APIs. And of course, you're facilitating an influx of new, user, new users to your site by providing data portability mechanisms. Okay, so the value of data portability for end users. Well, are you happy yet? Uh, if not, why not? Well, first of all, I already mentioned these. We have the three things, less uh, filling out and repeating of your user profile, less redefining of your contacts, and less pain having to transfer your content items. Really, you want these kind of services to be transparent. You don't want to have to spend a lot of effort uh, redefining and repeating all this information again and again. So, where will the data portability go in the next few years? Well, ideally, I think it should try and implement some of the things that are being looked for already. Mark Cantor and uh, others uh, created this thing called the Bill of Rights um, for users of the social web. And if we can stick to some of those ideals and try and show how we can implement those, I think that would be certainly a good start. And these involve promoting things like ownership of your data, uh, controlling uh, how information is shared, and then having freedom for access to your data. Now, there's no need for efforts like data portability to uh, create new technologies because there's so much stuff out there already. We really, we really just have to um, stand on the shoulders of giants, as they say, and show how the various parts that we have already can work together. So, my last question is, what's the semantic web? How can it help data portability, and what the hell is it? So this is the book that all of you wanted to have at Semantic Web for Dummies in four easy steps. First of all, we have XML customized tags. So for example, something like uh, a dog is called Nina. Then we have relationships, which are uh, in what's called RDF, which are in, in triples. So for example, Nina is a dog of Stefan. Then we have these things called ontologies, which are basically hierarchies of concepts. So, for example, a mammal might be a canine, and there might be a specific type of dog, which is cotton the tulier. And finally, we have some rules which allow you to say stuff. For example, if a person owns a dog, then a person cares for a dog. Now, there's various semantic web uh, ontologies for describing stuff. We have friend of a friend, uh, which is used for defining yourself and your friends. And also, in the microformat space, there's um, XFN and HCARD which all can be linked to OpenID. Then from my side, you see my t-shirt, Chuck is used for defining social web content, items and containers, the users that make them, and also the community spaces that they are part of. And you can define all um, social web content and items using a combination of Fulf and Chuck. I won't go into this here. But what this has allowed us to do is to First of all, define the social objects that connect people and communities. The semantic web can express these relationships, and this, this can be used for reuse, interoperability, and portability of your data. That's it for me. I'm John Bresen, and I support data portability. Thank you.